Tokyo is known as one of the most orderly cities in the world. But in 1945, the year World War II ended, cameras captured it as a lawless place driven by necessity and greed. Bars of gold were pulled from Tokyo Bay. This is only a fraction of the several trillion yen worth of assets hidden by the former Japanese imperial military. There were brothels run exclusively for the occupation forces. Many women worked as prostitutes to feed their families. Within the ruined city, there existed another world. While 100 people starved to death each month, the families of the occupation forces lived in luxury. A wealth of footage was discovered that documented year zero, the 12 months that followed the end of the war. On top of that, more than 100,000 pages of confidential CIA documents were released, bringing many facts to light. What emerged was a void that swallowed people, materials, and money, what we've named the Tokyo Black Hole. The first black hole that appeared in the ruins of Tokyo was the Black Markets. A large amount of goods from the Japanese military and the occupation forces ended up being sold illegally. Opportunists who reaped profits ended up playing key roles in politics and the economy. Tokyo Sokai, areas where Japanese people were banned, were created in Ginza and Ropongi. In the world of pleasure, the foreign mafia maneuvered secretly. Right-wingers and military staff from the Imperial headquarters changed sides to the former enemy forces, providing intelligence or becoming smugglers. Everyone jumped into the black hole to survive. A young man from the 21st century travels back in time to 1945. Hey, you! Through a mix of historical footage and recreations, he gets lost in the Tokyo black hole and experiences year zero. How did Japan's destroyed capital recover? This is the rarely told story of the difficult days, weeks, and months in Tokyo following World War II. Black hole. Okay, sir. Okay, sir. Hmm. Sorry, sir. I'm going to go to the hospital. Okay. Okay. I got fired. That night, I was drunk, and I saw the ghost of my grandfather. I followed the ghost, and ended up walking down a very long underground passage. As I emerged from the darkness, I came to a deserted space. Is this an old bomb shelter, I wondered? Uh. 
Memories of war were projected as if they were oozing from the wall. Before I knew it, I was living in a destroyed neighborhood. Is this a nightmare? Or am I in hell? The only thing I was sure of was that there was almost no food here. An ex-soldier helped me when I was almost starving to death. Was he my grandfather who led me here? いいだか。早くや。1000万人植え地にするって話。1000万だと。せっかく生きて帰ってきたってのによ。家もやけりゃ。家族も死んだ。戦争に負けたとたん食い物の奪い合い。兵隊なんか相手にされねえしな。上野じゃ不老事ところね。闇屋の手先になってさ。This is rare footage of people coming back to Japan after the war. 6.2 million ex-soldiers and displaced residents of war zones began returning in September 1945. People had lost their families, assets, homes, and jobs. Many dove into black market businesses. Takeshi, you're not a man. To survive here, you have to do whatever you can. More than 100 bombings destroyed half of Tokyo, shown here in red. Black markets appeared almost overnight in the ruins and spread nationwide. Black markets are illegal free markets. A wealthy street vendor in Shinjuku published advertising in September 1945 to promote participation in the black market. The vendor was Kinosuke Ozu, known as the Al Capone of Tokyo. 
食事現金で取引をするとこういうねこうこうこうやったさあ来るわ来るわワウワウ仕掛けてきたやめはいけないとね統制だからやめをやら踏ん張られると薬の責任は俺が持とうと教育の方は俺が引き受けるから People relied on the black markets for their survival. However, black market prices could be 30 times higher than government regulated prices. A cruel destiny awaited the have nots. Oh, I'm s o r r People could not survive on the meager food supplied by the government. They had to buy rice from farmers in secret. They risked their lives to go shopping by train. When they finally returned, police were waiting at the train stations. When merciful officers found secret purchases, they confiscate them. When authorities investigated the black markets, they targeted women. They would run desperately. If they got caught, their families would starve. The occupation forces in Tokyo took possession of a building that faced the Imperial Palace and made it their general headquarters. In addition, Supreme Commander General Douglas MacArthur ordered the seizure of 800 other properties. Wealthy residences with flush toilets were commandeered first and used as homes for officers. This is recently released footage recorded by a military cameraman, showing Tokyo immediately after the occupation began. Surviving structures in Madunouchi around Tokyo Station and the Imperial Hotel. All these buildings were commandeered and made off limits to Japanese people. Movie theaters and musical theaters were also taken over. In the Ernie Pyle Theater in Hibiya, soldiers enjoyed an opera featuring the Emperor as the main character. The Japanese government paid for the cost of the occupation. The bill added up to 39.6 billion yen, nearly one third of the national budget at the time. This rare footage found in Australia shows a luxurious garden party thrown by the family of an occupation force member. Japanese entertainers were hired. And again, the Japanese government footed the bill. Many occupation force families enjoyed luxurious trips to resort areas on trains that were for their exclusive use. However, beyond the wealthy world of the occupation, destruction and black markets spread without end. Potatoes, beans, porridge, stew, bootleg liquor. Black markets were filled with nondescript food. s t 
stew made from leftovers of occupation forces was a specialty of the black markets, where, with a little luck, one would find cigarette butts. Everyone picked up discarded cigarette butts from occupation soldiers and brought them to the black market. They made good money. We slept in underpasses and clay drainage pipes. We dug a hole in a destroyed neighborhood to keep warm. We also went to bomb shelters. Wherever you go, the fleas and lice followed. Typhus and cholera became epidemic. Caterpillars and crickets. We ate anything we could catch. A doctor even said the government should supply crickets by turning them into powder to prevent starvation. In 2017, the Tokyo I lived in overflowed with discarded food because of diets or the taste for gourmet food. In the future, crows can eat as much delicious food as they want. No one would believe such a story in year zero. I saw homeless children strolling around the black market like animals. The hollow look in their eyes gave me chills. Some children worked for gangsters or black markets, while others toiled away for low wages to feed their sick mothers. One day, I came across some orphans as government officials and police officers whisked them off to a facility. They were treated like stray dogs. The children were stripped of their clothes so they couldn't run away. Bony children. Hunger makes them emotionally numb. Tokyo lost everything. Actually, this was not quite accurate. A gigantic black hole swallowed the assets of the people. An incredible number of gold bars were found in Tokyo Bay. The news of the discovery grabbed headlines in Japan and abroad. These news images have been colorized. Les scaphandriers américains recherchent et trouvent quelques-uns des lingots d'or, d'argent et de platine que les japonais avaient jetés à l'eau pour les cacher. On assure qu'il s'agit d'un trésor valant 2 milliards de dollars. Precious metals and other items hidden by the Japanese army. Originally, they were assets the army gathered from the people of Japan in anticipation of a battle on the mainland that never happened. The estimate by the occupation forces at the time is equivalent to several trillion yen today. Why did the Japanese army hide so much? It was prompted by a notice issued by then Prime Minister Kantaro Suzuki on August 14, 1945, the day Japan accepted the Potsdam Declaration. The notice ordered the immediate release of supplies possessed by the army and others prior to the arrival of U.S. troops.
The United States Strategic Bombing Survey reported that Japan had enough goods to support the economy for two years and said a large quantity of food was believed to be in storage. However, when the occupation forces arrived, most of the goods had simply gone missing. Approximately 70% of the supplies formerly held by the Army and Navy had been dispersed. Privileged politicians and industrial barons have flaunted public decency and morality by selling the economic heritage of the Japanese people and impeding economic recovery. At the beginning of 1946, a large amount of goods hidden by soldiers was discovered in an army warehouse. 380 bags of beans, 450 bags of charcoal, and rice and rubber. 3,000 angry residents in the neighborhood stormed the site. Hundreds of people surrounded the Ministry of Foreign Affairs because of rumors about hidden goods. Despite official denials, a camera captured images of prohibited items at the time. Bottles of whiskey. What's more, there were piles of hidden goods in the Ministry's warehouse, such as rice and coal. Hidden goods were discovered all around Japan. These things were taken to the black market and sold at elevated prices. Five million soldiers come back into Japan. Most of them are sick. And they come back to a country where the government and the capitalists and the police are hiding all these materials. So all of these materials were hidden. Some of them came up on the black market. Some of them were just kept out. By hiding these materials, it made life harder for the ordinary Japanese. And I think they're crimes against the Japanese people. There is no reason to have respected that Japanese government that did this to its own subjects. On the other hand, some Japanese people ingratiated themselves to the occupation forces and sold U.S. Army supplies on the black market. Every high-ranking person on the list of large income earners was someone who became rich on the black market. This is Nobutsugu Shimizu. He's the CEO of Life Corporation, a major supermarket chain today. Shimizu developed friendships with a succession of powerful people. When Shimizu was young, he made a fortune in the black market. He sold materials he amassed from the U.S. Army. For the U.S. as well, lawless Tokyo was a money tree. Another person who gained favor was Kakue Tanaka, who later became the Prime Minister of Japan. He launched his political career in 1947. 
He testified that the owners of construction businesses profited tremendously from projects commissioned by the occupation forces. I am a civil engineering and construction company owner. The largest business right after the war was occupation army-related public works projects. A huge amount of money flowed into civil engineering and construction companies. The construction orders from the occupation forces would be worth $6.5 billion today. Paying back these costs stretched Japanese finances to the breaking point, even as the construction industry flourished. In the Imperial Palace Plaza, occupation forces held parades almost daily. Many people watched. But I found it boring. The Imperial Palace Plaza was also a place where occupation soldiers dated Japanese women in public. An American soldier in a good mood was teaching a young woman to dance. I took a peek and was questioned by an MP. Hey, you! No, 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 no. I'm not doing anything. I'm just looking at the tree. Get out of it! I'm not looking at the American people. Get out of it! It's not bad. The occupation forces prohibited the Japanese media from reporting that soldiers and Japanese women were dating. However, journalists in the U.S. bluntly reported the truth. The GI problem of getting a girl is usually solved by going to the Imperial Palace enclosure. Most of the available girls are neither the geisha nor prostitutes, but ordinary girls who have broken away from family controls. The usual routine is to teach the girl a little English and give her chocolate. Before the arrival of 400,000 occupation forces soldiers, the Japanese government decided to open a brothel to reduce sex crimes. The Ministry of Finance allocated 33 million yen, or about 11 million US dollars today, and a management organization was established. The organization was named RAA, or Recreation and Amusement Association. It was run by a superintendent general, and the office was located in Tokyo's Ginza neighborhood. RAA newspaper ads read, hiring special female workers, clothing, food, and housing covered, high pay. They didn't mention anything about the nature of the work. This newly discovered footage recorded by an Australian soldier shows the occupation forces only brothel. It had 265 rooms and 200 working women. Big news in the new year. The divine emperor suddenly declared he was no longer a god. The now human emperor embarked on a nationwide tour. Not long before, Japanese believed he existed above the clouds. Now, everyone could see the real emperor. Soon, discussion of Japan's imperial system became surprisingly open. 
It seemed like everyone felt comfortable speaking out about the system. It is better if he remains above the clouds. I don't think it's a good idea to become human in a halfway manner. I don't know about these complicated things, but I don't want any more government officials using the Imperial system. I came across a huge crowd of starving people protesting in front of the Imperial Palace. They wanted the Emperor to know how hard things were in the destroyed neighborhoods. Some people rushed into the cafeteria at the Imperial Household Agency. Later, everyone sighed when they read a newspaper report on what had happened. In the Imperial Palace, an overabundance of food was prepared. The menu included cooked fish, sashimi, and beef. <laughs> Meanwhile, the people were starving and angry. When I went to participate in the May Day rally for food, 250,000 people showed up. Five days later, the Emperor sent out a second message on the radio in his own voice. I didn't even know there had been a second broadcast after his announcement of surrender. But it seemed there was a limit to even the supernatural power of the Emperor's radio broadcasts. In a newsreel, students and businessmen were critical of what the Emperor said. Strangely, as soon as the Emperor admitted his humanity, new divinities appeared. Some 600 new religious organizations were born, one after another. The most popular was known as the Dancing Religion. People lost themselves completely in dance on roadways. I tried dancing as well. It made me hungrier. A black hole of secrets was born in the political world. A purge directive was issued in January 1946. 200,000 militarists were expelled from the Diet, and 27 right-wing organizations were ordered to dissolve. 30% of members of the lower house were purged in an event that shook the political world. The elimination of militarism was the most important policy for the U.S. in achieving democratization in Japan. However, behind the scenes, American officials secretly spared militarists and war leaders. A trove of CIA documents was released in 2007. It revealed that the intelligence organization of the occupation forces covertly used some war criminal suspects to obtain information on the Soviet Union and China. According to the documents, Lieutenant General Seizo Arisue, who welcomed General MacArthur, quickly cooperated with the intelligence organization of the occupation forces.
very clever turncoat, showed up as part of the welcoming committee for General MacArthur despite his bitter anti-Allied attitude prior to and during the war. G2 relationship was apparently developed. Adi Sue's approach encouraged the occupation forces to continuously scout military staff members at the Imperial headquarters. These individuals enjoyed endless funding from the occupation forces. They took part in espionage activities and were free from being judged as war criminals. Yoshio Kodama was hired by a special mission unit of the Japanese army during the war. He also provided information on the army to occupation forces. CIA documents revealed that Kodama cooperated with the United States anti-communist policy after the war. He took money and diamonds that he acquired in China during the war and distributed them to right-wing organizations and politicians. He felt it important to protect them, that they would have, could eventually, as the cold, if the Cold War heated up, they could be drawn upon as future allies uh, by the United States. So it was important to protect them from uh, retribution in the early, in the first year or two uh, of the occupation. As long as they were on our side, on the American side, they were fine. I don't think he um, um, worried too much about their wartime behavior. Tokyo. Black hole. Takeshi, you can do it with your hands? Yes, it's a hand. Do you have a hand? Yes, I think it's a hand. Well, I think it's a hand.新中軍が学隊探しててなお前バンドマンやれお前バカ野郎闇やよりはいいだろ新中軍に食い込めば飯が食えんぞ心配ないわよ竹さん私が話をつけてあげる After an unexpected turn of events, I started working as a musician in a cabaret in Ginza. There's already a cabaret in war-torn Ginza? That's a surprise. In the autumn of 1945, a series of cabarets and dance halls limited to occupation forces was built. The RAA, which established brothels for occupation forces, also managed the cabarets and dance halls. The place I snuck into was like another world. It had everything. for occupation forces were off limits to regular Japanese. The only Japanese allowed in were musicians, bartenders, and dancers. Dancers did the jitterbug, gyrating crazily. The pay was surprisingly high. The occupation forces hired musicians right after the war ended. Among them was Nobuo Hara, now one of Japan's most respected jazz musicians. 
During the war, Hada spent most of his time practicing and performing military songs in the naval band. After the war, he was determined to survive, so he asked for a job at a bar for occupation forces only. That was where he encountered jazz for the first time. ジャズ あ、みきさん。お世話になってます。どう。もう慣れた。いや。自信ないです。首にされそうで。大丈夫よ。死んだつもりになれば。なんだってできるのよ。ジルバってね。アメリカの兵隊さんが思いっきり振り回すもんだ
昨日どこだったなみゆきどうしたのほら例の進駐軍の帰っちゃったらしいよアメリカに本当かい何にも言わないでさそりゃかわいそうだ遊ばれたんだろ進駐軍によくある話さ所詮みゆきの分際じゃなその気になってたみたいだけど安心なさいやめろやめろかっこつけんじゃねえよてめえ文句があるな集中に行ってみろ It's been almost a year since I came here. Tokyo was filled with everyone's thoughts about the past year. Wherever I go, all I hear is talk about food and inflation. But I don't want to focus on negative aspects only. Let's forget about the nightmare and enjoy the peace. We got back our humanity. Peace is great. Year zero, after the war ended. I don't know much about the war. But what I do know now is that Tokyo literally did start from zero after the war. And I know how difficult it is to rebuild a devastated city from scratch. People at the time did everything they could to survive. And as a result, Tokyo was rebuilt into what it is today. The city that was reduced to ashes has come so far. I truly believe that. So, where did the Tokyo black hole go? Did it disappear? <sighs> Or have we just become blind to it? <sighs> I'm out of a job again. I'm not afraid of the dark. 